Hey, what's up guys? Today, we're going to be talking about a tree problem. So this problem is apparently a LinkedIn interview question. Um, I, it's probably not just them who ask, ask this question, but I saw it tagged under that. Okay, so here is the gist of the problem. So you get a tree and your job is to take that tree and serialize it down into a string, right? And once you have the string representation of the tree, take it from the string and then re-expand it back into the original in-memory representation of a binary tree. And there's a lot of ways you could do this. You could do this many ways and we're gonna look at how you can do that. But first, before we get into this, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel and like this video. My goal is in the next like one to two years to get this channel to 100,000 subscribers. Um, this is kind of like an arbitrary number, but I think that'd be kind of cool to do. So let's get straight into the problem. And before we even approach this problem, I kind of want to draw a parallel for you. A, a, a thing that this problem parallels to, or a thing that this problem kind of resembles, is the way that we make meaning of raw text files. So let me put a simple C program right there. So we have that program. And what happens is when we try to make meaning of this program to actually run it and execute it, what we do is a multi-step process, right? Okay, so we have that program right there. And what a compiler needs to do is it needs to take that raw text representation and turn it into meaning so that it can compile it and do all that stuff. And there's two key elements to this process, or not key elements, there's two key first steps that need to happen. So the first step is we need to take each of these individual pieces of the raw text and we need to tokenize them. And this is done by something called a lexer. And after we classify each of those string things, each of those pieces of the raw text as tokens, we've, we've taken a raw text representation and essentially serialized it. And then later something called a parser is going to take that and generate something called an abstract syntax tree, which is a tree representation of the composition of these tokens. So that abstract syntax tree can later be evaluated and a, we can make substantial meaning of it. We've essentially taken raw text and serialized it into something that makes sense. So kind of the parallel I want to draw is when the lexer was tokenizing the original file, what was it doing? What it was doing is it was looking at each individual element. It was looking at the int. It was looking at a parentheses, right? And what it was looking for was each of those individual elements, I want to generate a token from it and then pass the rest on. And then from the next set of items, generate a token, pass the rest on. And so this pattern is something we see common in recursion. It's the deferring of, of work. We say, I'll do my part, defer the work. So this is kind of the basis I want to kind of set um, before we get into um, solving this problem. So now that we have that in mind, let's go about solving this problem. So we need two functions. We need a serialize function, a deserialize function. First, what we need to think about is our traversals. How can we traverse the tree to give us a string representation that we later can deserialize? So there's in order, there's pre-order, we can do a breadth first traversal. There's a lot of ways we could do it, but kind of the way that I thought of going about it is doing a pre-order traversal where we hit the node, it's left subtree and then it's right subtree. And the reason I kind of jumped to that naturally is because it follows that pattern we just discussed of looking for that first value and extracting it and then passing off the rest. Okay, so that thought process makes sense. So let's put up a function, let's put up, let's put up a serialize right there. Okay, so we have serialize. But what does it take? We, we need to know our fundamental operation. And if we flash back to a video, I kind of discussed whenever we have a tree problem, what is the core thing that we really care about? And let's listen to Ben tell us about that. And what we need to look at is something that I strongly, strongly believe will save you a lot of time when you're trying to figure out these recursive problems, trying to learn recursion in general. This is a key. Whenever I'm trying to solve a tree problem, I have a tree. What is my focus of the tree? And let me show you what you should focus on. A single node. Whenever you're- Okay, so that makes sense. So we want to process a tree node. We want to process a node. 
And whenever we're doing these recursive functions, the number one, I'm think, number one thing I'm thinking is how do I process this single node and then defer all of the other work and let the recursion do its job. So, okay, first off, if the node is null, we wanna handle empty states. If I have a null node, can I serialize it into anything? I can't serialize anything. So if I have a null node, I just return null. I just return an empty string or an X or something like that, right? So we handle the empty case. If I have a node and it is null, I just return an X or something to signify it's null. Okay, that makes sense. So what if the node does have a value? Well, if the node does have a value, what we're going to want to return is that value appended to the serialization of the left subtree and the right subtree. But the problem is, how did we even get those two val How did we even get those two serializations? We need to find them. So what we do is we defer the work. What we do is we do that right there. And what we're essentially doing is we're saying, okay, I will know the answer to my subtree, but first, serialize left, serialize right. When you get back to me, then I'm going to say, hey, I know what I am. I'm gonna append myself to your serializations, guys. And then we return that value. But you may see a problem here. So when we print this output, the output is that. And if I were deserializing this, where do the numbers begin and where do the numbers end? Again, we're tracking exactly how I kind of was stepping through this. And this is a mistake, right? We need some way to separate these numbers. And the thing that makes the most sense is to have a delimiter. So what we can do is we can just insert a comma, right? The comma or anything that can separate them, a semicolon. So do that right now. Okay, so it looks like this is gonna work. Let's run it again and we get that. So I think that's going to work. That is good enough for us to deserialize later on. We've essentially taken our binary tree and serialized it. We said, if this node is null, just return an X and then go left, do a serialization to the left, do a serialization to the right. And when they base case out, they'll come back to me. When they come back to me, I say, hey, I know what I am. Let me append myself to the serializations I just got back. So now we know that. And I think we're prepared to deserialize. Our serialized representation looks like that. And what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna to need to make meaning of this. And this is where our connection we made before with the way compilers make meaning of raw text can help us here. I mean, we don't have to go that far to be like, yeah, that's the connection I made. But I mean, thinking of the recursion in this way of single action defer is a really good way to kind of get through these, get through these solutions. So now let's go to deserialize. The, first, we need to start with what our representation looks like. That's gonna help us a lot when we're crafting this function. So that's what our representation looked like. And what I wanna do is each of those values, I want to either generate a node or if it's just null, if it's just in like an X or something, just return null. So, okay, the problem here though is how do I know where my progress is in this decomposition, right? We've done problems where uh, we decompose stuff and keep a pointer. So maybe that'll work. Why don't we go down this pathway? And this is the pathway I went down. This is kind of the way I was thinking. Let's try a pointer, right? And well, the problem said, don't use global state. And this is kind of passing state around, which we shouldn't be doing. But anyway, let's make a helper. So first, let's put our function up. That is our function. We need to deserialize a string. So let's make a helper called deserialize helper. And let's put it there. And what it's gonna take is, it's going to take the string and the current position we're at. We're gonna start it off at index zero. Okay, that makes sense. So what I need to do is, I need to grab the item at index zero. Well, can I just grab the first uh, actual value in the string? I mean, when I pass this in, I didn't split it at the commas. Maybe, maybe I should do that. So, all right, let's rewind. Let's split it at the commas, pass it in as an array, and then do the work with a progress pointer. Well, okay, at this point, I'm kind of just sitting, staring at my computer screen, and I'm like, what am I doing? And then after further thinking, do we even need to 
ha pass around, like we can't pass around state. The problem doesn't allow us to. So delete all the stuff we just did. And one structure that maybe we could use is a queue. And why a queue? Why does that pop into mind? So the reason we think of a queue is because, I mean, it makes sense. Like it's, it's a line. One by one, the first node to get deserialized is that leading item. And then the next one, and then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So it makes sense to have a line. It's just like waiting in line. The other guys are waiting in line to get serialized until that gets serialized. So what we wanna do is we wanna follow the exact same path that our serialization took to deserialize. So reapproach, reapproach this problem. We cleared everything out, let's make a queue. And then let's populate that queue. So we made the queue, we populated it. And now let's pass to our helper that queue. These are the nodes we need to deserialize. They're either X's or they're nodes with integer values. So what we need to do is handle the empty state, handle the case if a node is null. If a node is null, well, we just return null if it's the X symbol or whatever we use. Okay, after that, if it's not that null, well, what we can do is we can materialize the value. It has to have a integer value. So what we can do is we can pull that out into some temp variable. And what we say is, what I wanna do is materialize what's on the left and then materialize what is on the right. Just like we did our serialization, we're gonna do our deserialization, right? Okay, and what we wanna do is, well, we wanna run it left and right, but what do we set that equal to? Well, I mean, we just created a new node, right? We're trying to create a new node with a value. And that's what we just did. And what we want to do is we want to set the subtrees. We're trying to recreate what we had in memory. And what we need to do is we need to set nodes left. We need to set nodes right. Whatever our deserialization on the left brings back to us, that will be the left of this node. Whatever our deserialization brings back on the right will be the right of the node we just made. Remember, all I need to worry about is myself. I turn myself into my node value with a, with a value. And then I say left, I defer whatever, whatever you need to do left, go do it. Whatever you need to do right, go do it. And then after that, what I need to do is just return myself because I've populated myself. And the hardest thing to understand about this is to see the recursion working in your brain, to see that happening. Because what's gonna happen is we're gonna pull off the first item, make a note out of it, and then go left and then go left and left and left and left until a base case. Then we come back and then go right, right? That's how it's going to happen. And the queue at every single point in the call, the queue in memory keeps the freshest progress of the next guy to process. So every recursive stack frame knows where to pick up where the other frame left off. So this is how our deserialization is achieved with our serialization. They mirror each other. Their behaviors are very similar. And in this manner, that's, I just said manner, that's all so fancy. But in this way, we are able to do our deserialize and that's what it looks like. So that is basically all there is to this problem. The key about this is first establishing how do I do my serialization? How do I separate the values? How, what traversal? And then based on that, knowing to kind of emulate the same pattern in our deserialization, deferring our action, saying, what do I need to do here? Then defer that action and then bring all the results back together with the final node we return. That is the key to this problem. And with many tree problems, it's just like that. Think, what do I need to do at this single node? And that was this question. It was titled a hard, but if, if you really um, deeply understand what we just covered, I think if you get a same caliber question like this, it's something you have a very strong chance at reasonably grasping. And I think that's kind of the key to this. All right, so that is all for this video. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. Again, my goal is I wanna get this channel in one to two years to 100,000 subscribers. I don't want to walk away from this project having put in so many months of time, energy, and just every like ounce of my being into something and not see it get where it needs to go. And um, yeah, um, that's kind of all I have. Yeah, yeah. 
I keep doing that as weird outros. Gotta switch it up.